Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional. I am your host, Veronica Belmont, and this is the show where we talk about the amazing science and technology from your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, comic books, all that great stuff, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Last week was our Pacific Rim episode, and we talked to robotics expert and author Daniel Wilson about Pacific Rim, which was a fantastic movie, by the way. But I want to know what you guys thought about the film. Let me know in the comments. But moving on, this week we are talking about a film that tons of you out there in internet world have asked me to cover, and that is, of course, The Matrix. In the film, you're able to download information directly into your brain, instantly learn kung fu and all sorts of other cool skills, and I wanted to know if that that is something that will ever be possible in our reality. And to find out, we are speaking to neuroscientist at UCSF, Bradley Wojtek. So Brad, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, when the film The Matrix came out, it, it seemed very far-fetched that we could actually download information yeah. into our brain. Has anything changed since then? Uh, so a lot, is, a lot of research has actually changed, obviously, since, when, when did it come out, 1999? 1999, yeah. Yeah, when that first came out, I think the most groundbreaking research going on was decoding information. And that was only a couple of researchers who had done that. And it was very invasive because you had to do surgery and implant electrodes into these, uh, into these animals. That was it, that was, that was as far as we got. And 14 years from now, we've actually come quite a long way. So uh, there's researchers, for example, at uh, Berkeley, you know, right across the bay here at UC Berkeley, Jack Gallant's lab uh, did research using fMRI, which is functional magnetic resonance imaging. They were able to actually decode uh, what people were probably seeing, what pictures people were probably looking at, and then also create, you know, say, based upon this, this is probably what the person was doing. So is this decoded a neurofeedback? Is that at all similar to what, to what uh, Neo was doing in The Matrix? So that, that gets more complex. So the decoded neurofeedback is, again, this is using fMRI. There was a science paper in 2011 by this group, I think at Boston University, mm -hmm. that was pioneering this idea of decoded neurofeedback. And what that is, is they had a person lying in an fMRI doing some kind of visual task. So they're using visual stimuli to stimulate different parts of the brain in order to, to compensate for how the persons were originally failing. And those neurons would become sort of primed hmm. and bias you to notice things in that direction. That I think that's how it works. a little bit manipulative in a, in a yeah, way. Yeah, kind of. It is. In the Matrix, right, you, you know, that's manipulative, right? That's yeah. external manipulative. <laughs> in the Matrix, you're directly, in theory, directly manipulating the brain somehow, right? The problem with the Matrix is really learning doesn't work the way that way. It doesn't work the way that the Matrix shows it. So I, I think the easiest straw man type argument example would be um, Neo learning Kung Fu, mm -hmm. right? Uh, now imagine I take somebody who's 500 pounds and I upload them Kung Fu. Just because you might understand the basic principles of something doesn't mean you can execute on that thing, right? So you can't do the, the body motions right. and it, that's something that needs to be trained. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the matrix makes the assumption that the, the brain, central nervous system, is, is where all the action happens, right? That's where all learning is. But we know that there's a really intricate, complex relationship between the brain and body. So is different types of learning possible? For example, if I were to download a mathematics textbook into my mind, would that be easier than teaching me how to do Kung Fu? I would say yes, because there's fewer parts involved in some sense, right? If you, if you take a part as being the brain and the body, right? For mathematics, you, you, you're not talking about a physical activity that also needs to have intricate relationships between muscle movements and things like that. You're just talking about something in the brain. But it gets really complex because when we learn, it's not just like flipping a bit on a transistor in a computer um, or something like that. It's, it's, there's physical changes happening in the brain. In the matrix, it's some kind of plug that plugs into the back, right? And what the impression that you get is that it's writing information somehow, like electrically writing information into the brain. Mm -hmm. Whereas what it would need to do is actually change the physical structure of the brain. So it's kind of hard to talk about this stuff without going into the singularity discussion because <laughs> in a way, if it were possible to download information into the brain, it could also perhaps be possible to export that information into some kind of holding vessel or into some kind of different you know, body or computer or, you know, all-knowing kind of cloud in space where people hang out, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> is that kind of where, where that would go? Yeah, so there's a great book series, uh, Altered Carbon, talking about yep. mind uploading, mm -hmm. right, or, or body transfer. I forget exactly how he puts it. Um, but the idea is that, well, you know, if the, the brain is a computer, well, you can take all that information and put it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. right? um, and I think there's a little bit of 
wonkiness in the metaphor because the brain isn't a computer in the sense of like my my laptop is a computer, right? It's a sense it's a computer in the sense of how Turing meant what is a computational device, right? The, the brain computes information. It is a computer. It's not a computer is like a silicon bit flipping transistor based kind of thing. Um, but in theory, you know, let's say if you're gonna go all like, okay, let's let's talk about some singularity version of the world. We've got incredible nanotechnology and things like that. If learning is actually physical changes in the brain, then you could have some kind of nanobots that are like rebuilding the scaffolding on the fly very quickly, and they're you know shuttling around your brain and moving things around and and learning for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is the amount of complexity. You can have a computable deterministic device that is so complex you can't predict one state from the previous. Therein lies the question, is the brain computable? It's a computer, but is it computable? Or is it too complex? And, and it, that's the problem. So I, I'm guessing from what we've discussed that it, the, the way that information is downloaded in a film like The Matrix would not be possible for us as humans to kind of use as a, as a learning tool. There are ways we can modify for certain, there are ways that we can modify speed up learning process given what we know about the brain. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we're anywhere near doing something like the matrix and it's actually an outstanding question as to whether that's even possible going back to the computation idea. But there's certainly ways that we can, we can modify. I almost kind of want to give it a plausible then. I, I try not talking absolutes. I don't want to be the guy that comes on and says this is impossible and then right. tomorrow somebody figures it out and I'm a dumbass <laughs> that was like, not talking in absolutes, it's not statistically impossible. It's not statistically impossible. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you so much, Thanks, Brad. Veronica. Thanks, I really appreciate it. <laughs> so overall, I think I am going to give this a fictional, though it seems like our brains are capable of some pretty amazing things. But anyway, I want to know what you guys want to see on a future episode of Factor Fictional. Tell me on Twitter, on the YouTube comments below, what you want to see and who you want me to talk to. Until next time, I'm Veronica Belmont. Make sure you check back to Tech Feed every week for brand new episodes on Friday. YouTube.com slash tech feed. I'll see you next time.